product download, win SCP, extract. Before we do this, we already have created uh, our HL box here. Win SCP the product, extract the product, install the product, install it as a root. Then the next thing we did was uh, we did instance setup as Infomix user. After Infomix user instance setup, what we did was uh, we kind of walked through the basic commands. One of the basic commands that we did was uh, onstat space minus checking the instance status. Also we learned about how do we switch between uh, various instance level operations. Right. So for example on mode hyphen yes minus k or minus u or minus k u using the minus y option things like that. Another important command we learned is on init. On init. Just hold on a Right, another one is all in it. Hyphen I is a very dangerous option. It, it reinitializes uh, entire your disk. So today I'll show you what happens when we do do uh, minus I reinitialization. So this is what I'm going to show today. Create a database. Create a DB space. I'll show you what happens. Then I'll show you the alert or message log stuff. If time permits, we'll see uh, log logging, physical and logical logging. How to move them from root TV space. Okay. So if you look at, I've just logged into this environment here. The moment I log in, you remember yesterday we did this setup of two environments in a dot bash profile. So I can set up whatever the environment I like. So I'm setting this environment. So when I say on start space minus, it says it's up and running from past 23 hours. Right. Now the tool we used to move around is DB access. What is a DB access? DB access is a SQL interactive tool. It's a tool that we use in uh, Informix environment for talking to databases. So similarly on our application side you have something called ISQL interactive SQL. For application folks they use ISQL for database administration team they use DB access. These are two different products altogether. DB access is bundled with the uh, IDS installation. IDS stands for Informix Dynamic Server. When you say DB access and enter, the screen looks like, <coughs> like the banking screens. When you go to a bank, they have various screens, it's screen based application. This is, we don't call it as a GUI, but probably the best you can get in character user interfaces. The high level screen, we call it as a DB access. This menu has various options here. Query language, connection, 
database table session and exit so whichever the one I highlighted here the respective description comes here I, I can move it using right arrow and left arrow and I go to connection the bottom description changes these screens were designed using a programming language called Informix 4GL from the same Informix company when I move to database the description changes right <clears throat> if I press enter within the database I'll go to the database menu inside the DB access I have I have under database menu right inside the database what I have is I have select create info drop close and exit if I go to select I have an option to select a database to work with so these are the four databases that gets created by default sysmaster is the default one this guy calls uh, sysutils then the sysuser gets created and the last one gets created is sysadmin right let's pick up a sysmaster now our first objective is we want to create a database we want to create a database now how do I go ahead and create a database I am using an option here called create right <clears throat> the moment I go for a create database the current database connection is closed and here it's asking me for an option that type of database name for example Ravi DBS so Ravi so I did a backspace so it's screwed up the things so if I am confused at somewhere if I am not sure what to do press control C control C is for interrupt or to just go back to the previous screen previous menu so let me try this one more time go to create Ravi DB and I press enter then it throw me this option where do you want to create Ravi DB which DB space what is what kind of a log is it a case sense to database if I go to a DB space option here right now I have only one DB space now let me explain you what is this DB space let me take you to the initial architecture for understanding this we need to look at uh, informix architecture from storage aspect We, we know this architecture, right? The Informix architecture from instance model. So we just created one server instance that got like four default databases. And also we created another server instance that got a four default databases. I'm trying to add one more database here. To add one more database, we need to look at the Informix architecture from storage point of view. So this is what I am talking about. At a high level I have an instance. The entire instance is stored in the form of DB spaces. DB space is a logical thing which has physical chunks within it. Which has physical chunks within it. Now each chunk is a combination of a phase. What is a phase? Phase is again a logical thing which is a combination of operating system blocks operating system level physical blocks now let me exit from here or let me open another session let me first show you the storage architecture what I am talking about I am setting this 13 environment When I say on stat space minus D, D stands for here data base spaces. 
db spaces in short. Look at this output. When I say on stat space minus d, it says that I have one active db space. And the db space name is root dbs. And the warner of the db space is infermix. And the page size is 2048. And it has got number of chunks as 1. And the db space number is 1. When you look at next chunks, when you look at next chunks, I got one chunk here which is associated with this root db space. Now if I go back to that diagram here, I'm talking about instance, I'm talking about db space, db space having chunk, chunk is formed by a pages, combination of pages. That's exactly the same thing you can see it from here. So this is my instance, IDS13, which is combination of so far one db space called root dbs. This root dbs is combination of one chunk so far. Now you can ask me, how, when did we create this chunk? If we go back to that instance creation, we touched a file called root dbs and online. And also we specified this file location in Informix dir etc. If you do this on config, if I via your on config file, so at the top, if I scroll a little down, this is the path we specified. This is the first chunk. It's a physical file. It gets allocated these many bytes. These many bytes it gets allocated. So this is the default. This is the chunk in which your four databases got created. See, database is nothing but a storage. You have to use store that storage somewhere at some physical location. For example, if you are creating a notepad or a wordpad, that needs to get stored somewhere. Where it is going to get stored here is, this is a path, this is a file, and this much is the storage it got allocated. Look at this. This may, this is the size it got allocated so far. Now that's what you see when you say on stat space minus d. This is your db space, and this has this chunk allocated, and it got so much so far size 150, 150,000 pages. 150,000 pages. Now why it is 150,000 when we allocated 300,000? Because this is bytes, sorry this is KB, it, this much is a KB, but our page size is 2 KB, so 300,000 divided by 2 is 150 pages, 150,000 pages. Okay. Any questions so far, Ravitija? Yeah, uh, small doubt, um, Ravi. When we are uh, giving this command on stat dash, we'll be getting online, right? So where we can find in which environment we were, uh, I mean we were present. Uh, are you getting my question? Yes. For that you have to depend upon the environment variables. See, that's a good question. When I say on stat space minus, it does not talk about what is your server name and anything. You have to depend upon your env. Just search for word called informix then you see an important informix environment. This is very, very important. I'm glad you asked this. Because the environment variables that are basic environment variables. The first thing is 
your Informix DIR. Informix server. Informix SQL course on config. The four very crucial words. After this, you have path, LD library path, or in some environments, it's called SHLIB path, shared library path, then turf and turf path. These four are very, very important. So you have to search this environment. Otherwise, your onstat command won't succeed if you don't have this environment set. Yeah, this is the way you have to depend upon your current environment. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, got it. Yeah, very good. Now coming back here, coming back here, what I've been talking is when you say on stats space minus D, you get a DB space created by default, which is called a root DBS. Why we call it as a root DBS is when you log into on config, the root name you specified is root DBS. That's why you get the db space name as root dbs which is created with one chunk now what i'll be doing is i'll be going ahead and adding a new db space i want to add a new db space so before i create a db database i want to create a db space as revy dbs and i want to add one chunk to it is mount storage revy dbs dot one Now first we need to touch this file. When you say touch, it creates a zero byte size. There is no storage allocated right now. Now what I need to do is I need to create a new DB space. Now the command to create a new DB space is on spaces. The command to create a new DB space is on spaces. So when you say on spaces, again, it has various options. One option is you can use minus C option. That is to create a DB space. We'll talk about them later, most probably tomorrow, about the different uh, logical and physical storage structures. That is one option we have is a create a DB space, minus C. If I scroll it top, with minus C you can say what is the DB space name, what is the page size, is it a temporary DB space for temporary sort operations, where is the initial chunk, what is the offset, how much is the size? Do you want a duplex concept, like a mirroring concept for the chunk? Now, if I if I wrote this here, one after the other, what I'm talking about here is, on spaces, minus create, minus D, DB space name I want to give is Ravi DBS, minus K2048, it's not a temporary table space, the path for this initial chunk is this one, what is the offset, 0, how much size I want, let's say I want 20,000, that means by 2, that many pages will get allocated. I don't have any mirroring concept for this. So I'm okay here. I'll copy this and paste it here. It says invalid page size. So you need to say 2K. Right. 
so the addition of a chunk is failed I mean, addition of a DB space failed because this file should be the you know, read write read write permission 660 where is this file WebDPS. we should have a 660 that's one of the requirements so what I should have done here is uh, touch mount storage the VDBS dot one change mode 660 ideally we should be changing the warner everything to informix and informix but it's already created with informix so that's fine so these are the basic steps that needs to be performed touch change mode change warner Now if I go ahead and add this db space and create a db space now. If it is successful, I see a message that space successfully added. A level zero archive of who db space will need to be done. That means it's asking us to take a full backup. We are not at the level of taking backups at this point in this course. So we'll, we'll discuss about this later backups. But the important point here is space successfully added. Now when I say on start space minus D and enter, you will see a second line, second chunk, which we, I'm sorry, second DB space. The name is Ravi DB. Ravi. Yes, Ravi. Yeah. Yeah, when we are giving <coughs> this uh, command on spaces, hyphen O is there, right? I mean to the extreme end you can see after giving that part name hyphen zero hyphen o right yeah yeah so what it is yeah okay hold on that question i'll explain you that to explain you that i need to help you <coughs> understand uh, i'm sorry i need you to help you understand types of chunks right so whenever we touch the offset is always zero Okay, I'll talk, I'll talk about it. So let me finish this up. Right. So if you see here, I have a second chunk created, which is Ravi DBS. Right. And uh, the associated chunk names, the associated chunk name for this DBS, Ravi DBS, is 2. This is a chunk name. And I have given 20,000 here, so 10,000 pages got allocated. And free is 9947. So remaining pages. What is the page size here? 2 KB, 2048 bytes. So remaining 53 pages are for overhead. Now why did I create this? <coughs> I create this because I am at this database creation step. It showed me so far only root DBS. Now let me go back, control C. Now if I go back to DB spaces one more time, I'll see two, two options now. One is root DBS, another one is private DBS. <coughs> now it's not advisable to create anything in root DBS because this is for system databases only because it has a very important metadata. We don't want to mess up with that. So now I am choosing Ravi DBS here. Now the next option is log. I'm not going inside log right now. Case sensitivity. Do I want case sensitive database to be enabled? Which differentiates between <coughs> lower and upper cases. Exit. I'm okay to exit now. The moment I say exit, it says create new database. <coughs> yes, I'm pressing enter. You can see running tab at the bottom and it came back to the same database options. If I go to the info and if I go to the databases, I can see my fourth database created there as RaviDB.
If I come to the other screen and say that all stats space minus D, you see here from double line four seven the size got reduced to the free page sizes, free pages got reduced to eight two zero nine. Right. That's that's because the database occupies some space, basic space. Now if I connect to the RevDB here. And if I press Control C, exit, exit. If I come to the DB access tab, it says that I already connected to Ravi DB under the instance ID as 13. If I go to query language, now this is a new optional entry. So far I am in only database. Now I am going to query language. Now this this brings in SQL interface, which has various options. One option I'll choose is new. Then it place my cursor here. I can say create table p1 all of one integer. So the traversal here on the screen is depended upon the options here. So I give a wrong if I want to go back left arrow integer insert into t1 values. How comfortable you are with SQL, Raviteza? Yeah, I'm okay with it. Yeah. So I created a table here called T1. Then I'm inserting some data into it. Then I'm selecting start from it. And if I press escape, and it gives me an option to run it. If I run it, it created the data. It created the table and inserted some data into it. Now you can come here and say this on start space minus D. It, it has taken eight pages. From eight zero eight to zero nine, the free pages are only eight to zero one. So now the storage is occupied here. You see here this size is untouched because it did not modify anything here. I mean it, it wrote some metadata, but it's not in a big way. The real storage stores here. So far if I go back to the notepad what I have done here is I have created a basic data database right and to, before I created database I have created the DB space right. Now the next thing in our list is what happens when we do minus i option now. Now before I explain you this let me answer your question on what is is minus O. <clears throat> Here I am giving this chunk, right? So if you look at this option, I am giving this file chunk and I am saying that the size of this chunk is from 0 KB to 20,000 kilobytes, right? Now, if you, if, if you consider this from here to here, right, when I say offset 0, I'm saying that you can use it from first byte itself. You can start using the space allocation from first byte itself, <coughs> right. But this, this, this type of chunk is called Kukul file. There is some, some other kind of chunk which is called raw chunks. These are, these are some kind of a special devices or chunks in uh, files in Unix. <coughs> if I just uh, take this initial size as let's say 40,000 KB. I can say that from 0 KB to 20,000 KB and I can say 20,000, 1 to 40,000. I can divide my chunk into 2 itself and I can give this first to Ravi DBS. I can give the next one to test DBS. You see what I am saying? The same file <coughs> probably I got created for 10 GB from Unix team. I can say first 20,000 to 1 dB space from the next 20,000 I will give it to another dB space. 
This option makes sense only if you have some kind of raw chunks. I'll talk about this in tomorrow's session, like types of um, logical and physical storage structures. But at a high level, this is the option. Is it clear, Ravi? Still some confusion. Yeah. Right. So from where you basically start in your chunk? Are you starting from... So sometimes some people what they do is they just leave some a couple of bytes at the starting. Instead of zero they say they start from two. It just like initial couple of chunks they just leave it. Right. Yeah, okay. Fine. Uh, we can discuss this on more on tomorrow. Yeah, when I talk about the chunks, it's just more helpful. Yeah. Right. So so far we have covered creation of a database set with the basic options, then creation of a DB space with the basic options. Right? Now the next one we have in the list is uh, <coughs> what uh, and we have created some database and tables here. Created a table, inserted one record. Now what I'm going to do is bring down. What I'm going to do is bounce my instance. When I bounce my instance. Will my above table survives instance bounds? So what do I mean by survives is when I stop it and start it, will my table be there in the database? Ideally it should be there. When I say on start space minus, when I say on mode minus KUY, so it kills the sessions and uh, immediately brings everything down to offline. It is offline now. Now how do I bring it up? On init minus V. When I say here on start space minus now it says it's online. This whole process what we have done is called bounce, bouncing an instance or stopping and starting. If I go to DB access now, if I go to database and if I go to select, I can see my database called RevyDB here. I'm selecting this database so that it comes here. Then if I go to exit and equal into the database, there is another tab here called table. If I go to table and if I click on, if I enter on info, I can see T1 here. My table is there. So that means the bouncing of an instance does not change these physical structures or any physical stuff. Now I can say T1 and I can see what are the columns it has, if it has any indexes, what are the permissions granted on it. I can exit from this table screen. I can go to query logways and I can enter a new, I can say select start from T1. I can see the data called 549 record. Right. Now what I'll be showing you right now is, I'll be shutting down again.
This time what I do is I try to bring it up by initializing the disk space by using an option called minus i v. So it says that this action will initialize IBM Informix Dynamics Server. So initialize means it's going to initialize everything at a disk as well. I'm saying that I'm okay to continue. Right. This initialization is a very dangerous thing. That means you are going to lose everything. So that's why it won't allow you to initialize just like that. Informix would like to check whether you are doing it purposefully or by mistake. Right? So that's why it fails here. And it is saying that check the message log online dot log. When you say on start space minus m, last 20 lines will be coming here. So one important message you can see here is disk initialization is aborted. Disk initialization is aborted. If you are really sure that you want to do a disk initialization, you have to go to on config file and modify this parameter to 1. So let me go to my on config file, which is under Informix DIR etc directory. If I say vi on config, if I search for this word called full disk initialization, this is 0, I need to change it to 1. What is this full disk initialization? It's one of the parameters in on config. If it is 0, it allows full disk initialization only if no instance is detected at the root chunk location. 1. Required if an existing instance is detected at the root chunk location and you would like to overwrite it. Now when I say on init hyphen iv, the same command again, this time the initialization proceeds. So there are two initializations here. One is shared memory initialization. Shared memory is nothing but your memory, physical memory initialization. And the second one is disk initialization. So for disk initialization you have to use an option called hyphen i. That's what I have done here. And I can see a message that it's successful. And I say on start space minus it is online. It is online. Now let's see if my table survived. Ideally it should not. I go to DB access and I go to database and if I say select, I can see only four default databases. My database that I created manually is gone. Why? because I have done disk initialization. When you say disk initialization, everything looks like a fresh instance. Everything is completely new. <clears throat> right. You see what I'm saying? So that's why it is very, very dangerous to do this minus i. So it's not advisable at all, unless you know what you are doing. And the production instances, I don't think you do this ever except for the first time when you are upgrading or migrating. Any questions on this? Okay. No, no. That's good. So the next option, next what I have in the list is uh, alert or message log. If you have noticed here, if you have noticed here when it failed initialization, it wrote something on the screen saying that uh, 
It said that one unit <coughs> fatal error in shared memory initialization. Okay. So what I'm saying here is if there is any issue during the operation of your Informix server, there is a file called message file. There's a file called message file in your ARM config. This is called the message path, the path of the Informix message log file. This is the location. And we have created this file as part of initial installation, I mean initial instance setup. Now this file gets written continuously. This is a text file. This is a text file. So if you VI this file, you can see at the bottom. If you scroll it down, shift G. So at the bottom you can see what's happening exactly. So this is a file. This writes in the form of like timestamp and what is happened there. Timestamp and what is happened there. The first file you should look at for troubleshooting anything. If there is a complaint, some complaint on your Informix server, this is the first file I come down and check it out. This is the first file. I come down and check it out. If there are any warnings, if there are any errors. So which, which people call it as a message path or message log or alert log or online log. The end result is same, which is going to helpful for us for troubleshooting. The next concept we have is logging. The next concept we have is logging. Before I go on to logging, let me show you the display out of this root DBS. When I say on start space minus D, I'm saying that I have only one DB space called root DBS and this is the chunk and these many free pages are there. That means out of 150,000 free pages, 100,000 pages are already used, like 2 by 30 is already used. Now how that 2 by 30 is used? How that 2 by 30 got used? If you want to see that information, you have to depend upon on check space minus PE and say root DBS with the pipe symbol more. This helps me to print the extent layout saying that for root db space in this chunk page size is 2 this much is used starting from 0 12 pages are for reserve purpose from 12 there is one page which is left for free list page Then from 13, there are 250 pages used for this purpose. After this, I have, starting at 263, 25,000 pages have been used for physical log. After that, I have logical logs, 12 logical logs, where each logical log size is 5,000. You can see this information from the configuration file. If I go back to the other terminal. There is a term called physdbs. 
DBH by DBS. I'm sorry, it's a PHYS file. <coughs> there is something called physical file. The physical file size it says here 25,000 pages. That's why you see here 50,000. It's multiplied by 2 because the page size is 2. And similarly when you scroll it down, there is something called 12 log files. So that's 12 log files here. Where each log file size is 5,000 pages. The size is 5,000 multiplied by 2, 10,000 here. In fact, it's a reverse way. Since we specify 10,000, the space 5,000 pages got allocated here. Right? By default, we have a physical log and logical log which gets created in root DB space only. Now, for performance reasons, we have to move these two log files out of this root DBS. I'll show you now how to do that. If I scroll it down, these are all the various system tables. Sys DB spaces, Sys license info, Sys tables. You can see that information if I press right. From 94.572, this much is a free. Now let me go ahead and create a table in root DBS, even though that's not advisable. Let me go ahead and create a table, DB access. I go to query option. So then it will ask me to select the database. I come to new, create table, call student, student ID integer, student name, uh, character of 20, insert into student values, 501, David Deza. Now I created a table here. Now let me check the display out one more time. You should be able to see this student table at the bottom. You see here what I'm talking about? From 94572 it occupied 8 pages. That's the extent size. The default extent size you got allocated is 8 pages. Once you consume all those 8 pages, then you get another extent allocated or next extent allocated. So this is a very important tool. How your display out is there. Any questions till now? No, yeah. Now, what are these physical log and what are these logical logs? Now, let's look at the presentation here. IDS server, Informix Dynamics server depends upon below three procedures to make sure data consistency. One is physical logging, checkpoints and fast recovery. What is a physical log? Which is a set of disk pages where the database server stores an unmodified copy of the page called a before image. your pages let's say I have given you a notebook and I have asked you to start writing from page one you will start writing from page one okay that's your day one assignment again when you come back on a day two I'll ask you to rewrite on a page one right what happens here is before you rewrite on a page one you take pre picture of it so that in case I want you to go back we have a picture of it so that you can go back 
right so here also in the database is the same scenario before you do any operations before you continue with any operations you it's advisable it advisable for us to keep the prior image so that's why database by default keeps the prior images whenever you do update insert any DML operations right so that pre images of your pages are going to store in physical log that by default gets stored in your root db space whatever is the page you specified here now this is a very high write operation so since it is very high write operation is not advisable to keep in root db space so that's why we have to move it outside the root db space now what is a checkpoint <coughs> Checkpoint refers to a point when the database server synchronizes the pages on the disk with the pages in the shared memory buffers. To explain you this, let me go back to the day one. Let's see if I have it here. If you look at this architecture here from the process model, you sit here as a client. You sit here as a client. You connect to the database server. You connect to the database server. Now whenever you want to work on any of these DB spaces, root DB space or Revy DB space or XYZ DB space, you have to bring specific data from physical storage your main memory it is as equivalent as you are running something for example in your Windows laptop you want to play a movie where is that movie physically stored in your hard disk can you play it directly in a hard disk no you cannot whenever you right click and run it it will be transferred from your hard disk to main memory that's where your CPU is going to work that's where your CP is going to run. So from hard disk, it comes to main memory. Right? <clears throat> Once it is in main memory, let's say the data transfer between physical and this main memory happens in the form of a page. The minimum you can transfer is a 2 KB. You cannot transfer like 10 bytes or 20 bytes no the minimum you can get is only pace before you put a phase here let's say on the resident shared memory or virtual shared memory before you put a phase here the prior image you store somewhere on this physical log on physical log file prior image so once you start doing your operations your page original page becomes dirty so let me take an example here. Well, I don't I don't say it's an easy concept to understand, right? But if you understand it, it's the same concept across all the databases. Now what I'm saying here is we have something here like let's say you already have a salary table on the storage here salary table is employee id employee name employee salary so you say 501 private status employee salary is only 10,000 bucks right now and he got a promotion and HR team would like to update salary table set employee salary to 20,000 where employee ID equal to 501 they issued this command now what happens you have on the top of storage something called memory
Now when you look at from the storage aspect, this record of Ravita is a might get stored in one of the pages. Yes, well, let's say page number is 49. Now this page might have another employee salaries as well. Because in a single page I can store 10 or 15 employee salaries. So doesn't matter, you cannot just transfer one row. There is no way you can just transfer one row from storage to memory. You have to transfer entire page here. So the page number 49 will come here to the memory. At the same time, there is something called physical logging I am talking about at a storage level. It also keeps this page number 49, pre-image. Now what this pre-image has, this pre-image has salary saying that Ravitesha salary is 10,000. And this is the same copy here, that's the same copy here. Now in the next step what is going to happen is this update statement is going to execute and it is going to modify the salary here from 10,000 to 20,000. Please note that this change won't be available here because it only stores prior images. Now <clears throat> if this guy commits here, right? the change will be like 20,000, right, right, now you don't need any longer this pre-image, so this is like not needed anymore, because the change is committed, now the moment you say 20,000, this 20,000 won't get synchronized with the storage immediately, no, you won't write it from memory to storage immediately, you won't write, take that, you don't write it Im immediately. Why? Writing immediately is a performance intensive operation. Writing from memory to storage. So you wait. In memory you can store let's say 10,000, you can store let's say 1000 pages. Maybe 10, 10 pages or 100 pages together in one shot you write it from memory to storage. How frequently you write it from memory to storage is a concept of checkpoint is a concept of checkpoint. Checkpoint basically talks about how frequently you write your dirty pages. You see here, I, I brought a page number 49 from here to here. Now this became dirty. Dirty means it's modified. It's not equivalent to the physical law page. The data is not equal into what is in the physical log, so it became dirty. So now it's your responsibility to flush this data from here to storage. Now how frequently you flush it out? That depends upon a concept called checkpoint. Checkpoint refers to a point in time when the DB server synchronizes the pages on the disk, the pages in the shared memory buffers. That means this data is flushed from here to here. That's the concept is called checkpoint. Very, very important. No matter which database you go, the concept stays as it is. Any questions on this checkpoint or understanding this physical log terminology? Uh, no, Ravi. So the third concept is called fast recovery. Now this is also called as instance recovery. So in scenarios like when you say on mode space minus KUI, it's like abrupt stop. So when you are saying that on init hyphen V, it is going to run some kind of instance recovery in the back end. So that I'm, I'm skipping it for now. We'll talk about in backup and recovery classes. So just understand this. There are three procedures that guarantees the data consistency out of which physical log plays a crucial role. If you look at the DB server stores, the before images in the physical log only until the next checkpoint. Until the next checkpoint.
the default location is root db space moving physical log space out of root db space improves our performance we can we can move physical log space to either db space or we can create a log space saying that p log space if you want to move physical log to a separate db space you have to use on spaces space minus c minus d if you want to move physical log to its own db space you have to say on spaces minus c space minus p so let me show you the syntax here I have to create it using minus c that's what we have done previously for one of the db spaces called Revy dbs and there is one option here called with minus c there is an option called minus p here p stands for physical law so you can use later on params to change the properties of a physical log space So on start space minus C will show me what is my current physical stuff. To control the amount of data, the DB server logs, you can tune the checkpoint interval configuration parameter. Now how frequently the checkpoint happens? When I say on start space minus C, I can see on configuration file information. When I say on config hyphen C grab for checkpoint interval. Checkpoint interval happens in 300 seconds or 5 minutes by default, always. Now, what are the steps in moving physical log to a different location? Let me show you their steps. Like I said, there are two ways here. The technique number one. I will create a new db space or I can use minus p option to move it right now let me go ahead and create new db space right so now the first technique is I have to go ahead and create a new db space first. So how do I create a new db space? The first thing I need to do is I need to touch a file that is creation of a chunk dot one change mode 660 change owner informix in comics this one now I need to say on spaces minus C minus D physical DPS what is this I can use this syntax Now let me follow these four steps. Let me copy it and run it. Now when you say on start space minus D, physical DB has got created. Right? When you see on check hyphen PE root DBS with pipe mode, the physical log is still in root DB space. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it from root db space to this new one. How I'm going to do it? There are two ways I can do it. One is I can use on spaces with the minus p option, right? Or I can say on params 
with minus p option. I can use this on params right now. On params is another command which helps me to play around logical and physical logs. I use this minus p option. This minus p followed by the size. How much is the size? I say 20,000. Minus d. What is the db space? Physical dbs. So this is a command. This helps me to move. Yeah, I just need to take out some space here. So just some buffer stuff. So it says that do you really want to move the physical log? Yes. So when it says that, okay, it's important to take a backup. Now if you see on check space minus PE root DBS, if you see more, now this becomes free. This 25,000 becomes free. Earlier, we are seeing here as physical DBS. Now this got moved to its own DB space called physical DBS. You see only free is 447. Right. So remember this. The physical log by default, what is a physical log? Prior images of pages. By default stores in root DB space. You can use this on, on params or by creating itself you can use this minus p option. You can use this minus p option while creating itself. Right. If I do a quick recap before I take questions here, what we have seen today in this session is we have created a db space we have added a chunk, a cuckoo file chunk. Then we created a database within this uh, Ravi DBS. Then we created a table. Then we bounce the instance. We initialize the instance. Disk initialization, how it fails without a proper uh, updation of full disk initialization parameter in configuration file. Then we monitored the alert log. Then we learned about what is a physical logging where it stores by default, what are these prior images concept, nothing but, right? How do you move the physical log by default, which is sitting in a root DB space, from root DB space to its own DB space. These are the commands. Or, I can simply say <clears throat> while creation itself I can use an optional card F and P hyphen C hyphen P page log space so you are not supposed to specify the page it's a default page size hyphen p path and there are two ways so in one step you can specify like this or in two steps you can do like this so logical log I don't think we have time now to cover so the logical logging and how do you move these 12 different logs I'll cover how do you move these 12 different logs from here to its own db space in next class. Any questions on this whole concepts that covered today? Everything is. Um, <clears throat> no, Ravi. Uh, 